I want to introduce Dr. Trent Lang. He's served on the board of the California Clean Money Campaign since 2003. He's been the spokesperson, lobbyist, and policy expert for the California Clean Money Campaign. Now, that's a lobbyist I can get behind. Um, and analyzing campaign spending and proposing solutions to campaign finance issues for both California and elsewhere. Uh, Trent has also got a PhD from UCLA with multidisciplinary academic background in computer science, cognitive science, cognitive psychology, and is the author of over 20 academic publications. Thank you. Uh, first, I am going to need you to press the B key. Okay, and can you hand me the thing that's right there? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. This is a, this is a fabulous conference. I'm so... That's why I didn't get up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're very sensitive. Hey, all right. Hey, all right. Der Derek Cressman very often saves the day. <laughs> uh, so, so thrilled to have everybody, everybody here. So many big faces, uh, 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 people that I know have been very active in this problem here in California. And as you've been hearing today, there are multiple levels that we have to work to address the problems of big money in politics. You know, eventually a constitutional amendment <coughs> uh, 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 solution, uh, a good, very strong uh, national solutions like the uh, uh, Anti-Corruption Act that may take a while, but you absolutely need to build a movement. Um, but also we believe uh, um, legislatively uh, especially here in states, like in California, that we can take some very, very important and key steps going forward. And so I want to talk about that, one of the focuses that we're doing. Uh, the California Clean Money Campaign has been working with California Common Cause and the League of Women Voters and other groups here in California for a long time on public financing of campaigns. Uh, uh, we've had some successes. Uh, recently, the city of Los Angeles dramatically strengthened its small uh, uh, donor matching fund system. Uh, for the city of Los Angeles uh, uh, to be, make it more like the New York City, which is a great uh, a model uh, so that uh, small donors get matched up to four to, times to one in the general election, increasing and strengthening the small, small power small donors. Uh, that was a long process to get that going, but we hope that will serve as sort of a model for public finance in California. Um, but one of the things that we've seen here after Citizens United, of course, is the problem of the absolute huge amounts of money uh, in, in super PACs, that the overwhelming uh, super PACs and generally, where money is dominating the system and even dominating the sorts of legislation that can be considered uh, without people knowing uh, uh, who is behind it. And if people knew who was behind these super PACs and attack ads and, and, and even uh, behind the sorts of... Uh, 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 commercials that attack legislation, uh, it would make a, big, a huge difference. That's that's our belief. So, here this shows just. Oh, sorry. Uh, let's see if I get this. So here, you can see this is a screenshot from one of those super PAC ads this this year. Uh, tell me if you can figure out who paid for this based off of this disclosure. Very much at the bottom, you say, paid for by Restore Our Future, Inc., which is responsible for the content of this message, not authorized by candidates for candidates committees, uh, restoreourfuture.com. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that's a, one of the perfect examples of, of why we need this. So, so this, this is the sort of disclosure that we have currently uh, in, in national ads. Nobody can tell who's paying for it. So... You look at these sorts of uh, 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 ads. These are the sorts of names that you see disclosed nationally. Why don't I do oh, I got hands thing? Oh. Yeah, I'll do what you do. Ah, okay, thank you. There we go. Um, so Nash, on the national super PAC ads, you see Restore Our Future. That was one of the largest ones. American Crossroads. Uh, that's, of course, Carl Rove's group, $105 million. Crossroads, grassroots policy strategies. These are all revealed in the fine print on the television ad. Uh, uh, Priorities USA Action, uh, that's a pro-democratic one. Americans for Prosperity, that's the Koch brothers. 
Uh, and there are lots more uh, 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 beyond that. I, I'm neglecting the most important one. Go to the next slide. Uh, the, the most devious <laughs> and dangerous of them all. <laughs> Americans for a better tomorrow, tomorrow. Though I understand that may be closing now. Or, it, it, it has closed. It, it has, has closed. Its money has disappeared, never to be found. Oh my God. <laughs> that makes it even more dangerous. So that's the sort of problem that we have, that have nationally. Uh, so there is, there is a bill, there was a bill, uh, uh, and it will be again, called the National Disclosed Act, if you've heard, heard about, uh, that would address this problem. So you see who's paying for the uh, ads themselves. Uh, uh, the National Disclosed Act made the most progress in 2010. And what it would have done besides kind of pierce through this veil so that you, 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 uh, uh, the nonprofits, when they spend on political ads, have to show who's paying for them, it would have actually required the, uh, the president or CEO of the largest funder of the ad to go on screen and say that uh, uh, we approve of this message, that we funded and help approve this message. That would have made a huge difference. Uh, it passed the Democratic uh, House of Representatives in 2010. It got 59 votes to break the filibuster. 59, fell one vote short. If we had that, then we would know who, at least, who was paying for all these uh, 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 super PAC ads nationally. Um, so let's go to the next slide. So that's good. they're gonna be reintroducing that bill, but the chances of it probably going through or uh, nationally in the next couple years, it may be a very difficult slog because of the opposition you have there. But in California, yeah. we don't have to worry about the filibuster. Yeah. So we can actually do something here in California and serve as a model for the rest of the country. And that's what we're looking at with the California uh, Disclose Act. Uh, so we have the, the same sorts of problems here in California. $372 million was spent on ballot measures ads this year. In fact, in California, it's, it's worse because we have the same sort of independent expenditures with candidates that everybody has to deal with, but we also have ballot measures that have huge influence on our, uh, on our state. These are the names of some of the largest spending ones this year. Stop special interest money now, stop corporate special exemptions from campaign finance rules, the 2012 Auto Insurance Discounts Act. All sound great, don't they? <laughs> but nobody knows who is behind them, In unless you go to the Secretary of State website, and, and most of the funders are actually revealed there, and so the press can talk about them sometimes, except in cases in this recent Arizona case where there is $11 million that was essentially laundered from the Arizona uh, nonprofit uh, Americans for Responsible Leadership. And it took a California Supreme Court decision on the last day to reveal, uh, uh, on the Sunday before the election to reveal uh, uh, that two other nonprofits, one associated with the Koch brothers, funded it. So that's, that's the problem. Uh, so here's how disclosure looks in California. Uh, this was a, a, a screenshot on the current law uh, 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 disclosure for yes on 26, a proposition in November 2012. Again, you can't see paid for by stop hidden taxes. Uh, as Bob Stern would say, you have to kind of freeze frame this to even notice this at all. And then you might be able to know sometimes in California it reveals the two largest funders buried in the fine print. Um, what the California Disclose Act would do would change that completely by changing it so the top three funders have to be revealed on the ads themselves. This is what those yes on 26 ads would have to display. Can you see how much this would change the game when it comes to California ballot measures? When, when you have, instead of stop hidden taxes in the fine print, you see that this proposition was paid for by Chevron, American Beverage Association, and Philip Morris. It would completely change the game when it, talks, when it comes uh, to legislation. One of the reasons the California Clean Money Campaign is particularly interested in the Disclose Act is because eventually we're gonna have to put public financing of whatever store we have on the ballot in California, and we'll be attacked by these same very sorts of people. And if we can disclose them there, then the public financing initiative will have a better chance to pass when it goes on. So this is kind of across the board, yes on 25, that was a corporate initiative. Uh, yes on 25 was one that was actually supported mostly by labor, so uh, it's, it's completely nonpartisan. If you're the three largest funders, one, okay, thank you. Okay, uh, 
that's what we're uh, talking about. There was a bill this year, AB 1648, the California Disclose Act that would have passed this. Uh, Assemblymember Julia Brownlee, who's now in Congress, she was the author. She's a fabulous author. Uh, Clean Money Champion, we've called her. Uh, California Clean Money Campaign sponsored it. The California Chamber of Commerce and its allies heavily, heavily, heavily lobbied against this bill. Very heavily lobbied against it. But 350 organizations and leaders endorsed it. It was passed by the assembly, got through the assembly uh, on August 20th. So uh, to put uh, this measure on the ballot in November 2014, uh, uh, it was too late to, to get through the Senate uh, and pass. So we gotta start again this next year, and that was partially due to California Chamber of Commerce and all of its allies that lobbied so heavily against it. But we're gonna come back. Uh, there is a huge coalition, I know many of you yourselves uh, have signed, uh, over 84,000 Californians signed petitions for it. This is how we get grassroots activism for legislation and really put the pressure on. That's how it got through the assembly and that's how we're gonna get it through next year. 12 newspaper editorials, over 350 organizations and leaders endorsed it, uh, not just the League of Women Voters and Common Cause and Public Citizen, but, but all sorts of groups across the realm and national groups. We're going to, this is how you, you build and uh, push legislation. Um, I'll skip this, we can skip this one. 84% uh, of Californians support this kind of disclosure, just to show that. Uh, okay, go ahead to the next one. Ah, here we go. Uh, this is one of my favorite quotes for why disclosure is, is uh, a constitutional from Justice Antonin Scalia. Requiring people to stand up in public for their political acts fosters civic courage without which democracy is doomed. So if we can, the Disclose Act is, in some ways, it's small bore. It's a first step. You need lots of other steps. But we believe it will start to sh shed light uh, on, on the situation to help some of the bigger things. Because when, when people see very clearly in all the ads that they're deluged with, who is paying for them? that the same corporations and billionaires every single time, that will help build uh, popular pressure, we believe, not only so that bad things don't get passed when, they, when they're fooled by those deceptive ads, but also build popular pressure for uh, uh, the, the additional much larger reforms that we also, also need. So uh, last slide, uh, I'll just say, you know, why is California important? As California goes, so goes the nation. Uh, and part of this is, uh, uh, you know, California is, is, of course, if you look at it in the size of its economy, the eighth largest, uh, it would be counted as the eighth largest country in the world if it were a country. So, so if we can make these sorts of reforms in California, and we've got a real chance because we don't have to worry about the filibuster, we've got a very strong activist community, we can s really show uh, uh, examples of how this stuff can work. Thank you. So uh, one quick note on that. Uh, Mitch McConnell says that if we uh, find out who the funders are, that that would be intimidating them. <laughs> <laughs> Their hundreds of millions of dollars aren't intimidating anybody. If we find out about it, that's apparently intimidation. And, and they know it, too. All, I assume a lot of you are here from California. Uh, my favorite one was the anti-union prop that was disguised as an anti-corporate prop funded by the corporations. Well, <laughs> if you thought you were going to win and the American people were on your side, wouldn't you, why wouldn't you just say it's a pro-corporation prop, right? Because they know that they are not popular and, and that if we know who it is, they're gonna, we're going to vote against them. 